took us one hour and 15 minutes to get from Kennedy Airport home. That is really unbelievable. Do you realize, Donald, that Mother and Daddy are halfway to Miami Beach by now? Uh, are, you, are you mad at me for something? No, oh, I'm just <laughs> disgusted with the whole idea that it takes as long to get from the airport to Manhattan as it does to get halfway to Miami Beach. Well, I don't blame you, honey. I sent in a suggestion that would change all of that, but they wouldn't listen to me. What was the suggestion? Cut the speed of the airplane in half. <laughs> Donald, I don't know why I try to talk seriously to you. You just won't have an intelligent conversation with ladies. Whoops. Oh, oh I think I'd better call Harry at the restaurant and give him Daddy's message. What was it? The freezer. Oh, right. What about the freezer? Call the repairman. Oh, right. Because it was something, right? Uh, right, right. Uh, because it was something and tell the repairman to bring his whatchamacallit. Oh, hello. Who is this? Oh, excuse me. This is uh, Frankie at La Parisienne. May I help you? Frankie, hi. It's Ann. Oh, Ann. Hi. How are you? I'm just fine, thank you. Let me talk to Harry. Well, he got sick and he had to go home. There's no Mater D here, so I figured I'd handle it. Oh. Oh, th that's fine, Frankie. Okay. Bye-bye. What's wrong? Harry, the maid of D is out sick. Donald, he took care of everything. There's nobody there now taking care of the restaurant. All right, listen, why don't we wait an hour and reach your father at the airport? He can get the next plane back and be back here before the night is over. Oh, I don't want to do that. Poor daddy. He's put that vacation off for two years now. Honey, if you don't tell him, he's going to be furious with you. Yeah, I know, but this is my chance to really do something for Daddy. I could handle everything. I could go up there and make reservations and check the staff and take the cash. But what about the maitre d'? Don't worry, I'll stay out of your way. My way? Well, Donald, the maid of D is a man's job. Well, maybe, but not this man. Diamonds, daisies, snowflakes, that girl, chestnuts, rainbows, springtime. Is that girl? Chief, want to eat supper with the missus? Frankie, it's Ann. Hey, Ann, look at you. Wow, you look great. Thanks, Frankie. This is my fiance, Donald Hollinger. Donald, this is Daddy's oldest employee, Frankie. How are you, Frankie? How are you? Listen, have you heard from Harry? Yeah, Pidge called. Pidge is Harry's wife. Oh. Yeah, he calls her Pidge, you know, short for pigeon. Not that pigeon's a real name. You know, he just called her Pigeon. Now he's shorting it up, he calls her Pidge. <laughs> what did she say? Well, she said the doctor's gonna stop by after he leaves the office, see? Now, it just might be that it's only a six or seven hour virus or an upset stomach. Yeah, I think I'll give him a call. I'll be right back. Yeah, she better get somebody in here in case Harry's out for the weekend, you know. We do 100 dinners Friday night and 150 on Saturday. Well, we should just wait until we hear what the doctor has to say. Hey, I like the way you take charge. <laughs> so you're gonna be the new boss after all Lou retires, huh? <laughs> no, I don't think so, Frankie. Oh, come on, Dickie. There's nothing wrong with going into your father-in-law's business, if it's honest. Yeah, well, you, you may be right, Frankie. I know I'm right. Now, you listen to me, Dickie boy. <laughs> oh, Lou's got a good thing going here. And I, for one, will stick with you. I'll be right behind you. Well, that certainly makes it more appealing. <laughs> well, they're not sure yet how long he's gonna be laid up. But everything seems to be going all right for now. Well, Thursday ain't nothing. We can handle his blindfolding. But tomorrow gets a little wild, you know? Oh. Well, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks a lot for your help. Okay, see you tomorrow. You too, boss. Hey, you, you want to get these into the kitchen, Frankie? Oh, and this guy's got a real flair. <laughs> Laura! Laura, hello! Em? Oh. Oh, excuse me. For what? Well, for just barging in on you when you're... Oh, we're nothing. This is Marvin. <laughs> Believe me, with him, there's nothing to barge in on. <laughs> Don't be too sure, Laura. <laughs> you want to shut up. <laughs> Don't you just love her? <laughs> I'm Anne-Marie, and this is Donald Hollinger. Oh, right. You're Anne's future intended. Go home, Marv. <laughs> 
I'd like to invite the future Mr. Uh, Ann's husband to drop in my place and pick himself out a nice new tie. Hey, uh, well, uh, th uh, thank you very much, sir. And we got some great new suspenders here <laughs> that would just go tremendous, as a matter of fact, with that outfit. Well, I just bought two pair. Why didn't we meet yesterday? Marvin, I said go home. Don't you want to uh, walk me to the door? You've only been here ten minutes. You can't have forgotten so soon where it is. <laughs> Don't you just love her? <laughs> so long, Ed. Dick. <laughs> what are you two doing here? Uh, well, I ain't got a call that the maitre d' at the restaurant was sick, so we drove up to see if there was anything we could do. Was there? We won't know it'll morning, so we're gonna sleep over. Mm-hmm. Well, I was supposed to have the weekend off. Oh, Laura, you can still have the weekend off. I'll do the cooking, I'll make the beds. You just think of this house as a hotel. I won't have you and him thinking of this house as a hotel. Well, all I'm saying is he wouldn't even be here if there wasn't something wrong at the restaurant. And besides, I'm not a little girl anymore. That's why you won't think of this place like a hotel. <laughs> and secondly, for 20 years I've cooked for you. I might as well do it for another weekend. Oh, uh, Laura, thanks. Yes, thank you very much. You don't have to thank me. You'll do your own picking up. <laughs> well, there's the answer to your problems. She'd make a great maitre d' or a dragon. <laughs> Are you tired? A little drowsy. Well, why don't you go upstairs and sleep in my room, and I'll sleep in Mom and Dad's bed? No, honey, no. You sleep in your own bed. I'm going to stay right here on the couch. Well, why should you sleep on the couch? Because I don't think I can get up. <laughs> oh, you're so terrific, the way you take on all my family problems like your very own. Honey, I did that when I gave you the ring. <laughs> Knock it off. Hot <laughs> coffee coming up. Oh, Laura, you didn't have to do all this. I could have done it. No, Ann, you might have made pancakes, but not this good. Your orange juice was terrific, Laura. It was frozen. <laughs> oh, I'll get that. It's probably Harry's wife. Hello. Oh, hi. Yeah, I've been waiting for your call. Oh. Oh, gee, that's too bad. Oh, no, listen, no, no, don't worry. Just tell him I hope he feels better. Okay, bye, thanks. Oh, Donald. How bad is he? The doctor said he's got the 36-hour virus. Well, honey, look, it's about 8 o'clock. If you get on the phone right away and call your dad, he can get him back here by dinner tonight. Donald, I'm not gonna ruin Daddy's vacation. Now, come on, Harry, we're going. Harry? Our maid of these name has always been Harry. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mr. Walsh, Harry ain't here. Now, he's sick or something. Well, I met... Oh, hold it, Mr. Walsh. Here's Ann. Ann, you know, loose kid. I'm not a kid. Hello? Hi, Mr. Walsh. Yes, I know. Well, Daddy's away and Harry's got the virus, so I'm kind of filling in. Uh-huh. Oh, marvelous. Great. Tonight, 4 at 8.30. Marvelous. We look forward to seeing you, Mr. Walsh. Bye-bye. See, Donald, that's how it's done. Hello, La Prigion. Prigion. Uh, Prigian, sorry. Uh, no, no, Harry is ill. Uh, this is Don Hollinger speaking. Yes, yes, that, that's right, Anne's boyfriend. It's a small town. Uh, no, no, I'm not moving in on Lou's business. I'm just trying to help out in a pinch. Uh, yeah. Three? Fine, fine. That's what? All right. At 8 o'clock. Fine, well, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Right. Hey, boss, if you don't mind, I think I'll continue setting up, huh? I don't mind, and I'm not boss. Oh, Pierre, hi. Bonjour. Pierre, how many people do we usually feed for lunch? Uh, 50 on a good day, 30 on a bad day. An average day, maybe 40. Once in a while, 35. Sometimes 20, and when it's really awful, about 18. Oh, 58 we had once. And December 21st, two years ago, we had about 67. 67? Maybe it was because of the weather. But usually... It's... Can't the chef make this in the kitchen? At Ethel's Diner, they make the salad in the kitchen, but at the La Parisienne, the maitre d' makes it at the table. Okay, okay, I appoint you maitre d'. Me, boss? Not me. Look, everything is on the tray. Now, you start with the salad dressing first. Eggs are the only thing I know how to make. Oh, well, then you're in, pal. You use a raw egg in a Caesar salad. Yeah, I, I know, I know. You told me, but I can't. Now, go ahead. Table six. Table six? Yeah, you gotta do it. Oh, I'll do it. I'll do it. I just don't know which one is table six. It's right next to five. <laughs> uh, 
The Caesar salad is one of my favorites, too. I hope you enjoy it. Here we are. <laughs> The anchovies. 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 Put a little anchovies in, and of course you have to really grind them up. <laughs> anchovies. <laughs> and, uh, egg. And then uh, next is egg. One egg, one raw egg. Put it in, like that. One raw egg, and then you have to really beat it up. Funny thing with raw eggs. Once they're in the salad, you like them. But by themselves, it's hard to imagine they're good. They make me sick. But, but, but of course, that's just me. A lot of people love them. Yeah, uh, and now, the uh, Worcestershire sauce uh, with a little squirt, squirt, and mush, mush. <laughs> Sounds like an Alaskan law firm. Good morning. Squirt, squirt, mush, mush. <laughs> now, uh, salt and pepper. Later. Uh, later with the salt and pepper, now the cheese. Later. Later with the cheese and the salt and pepper, now the um, greens, little greens and a little tossing. Little greens in there, all the greens, of course. And we do a little tossing. <laughs> there and now the cheese oil and vinegar uh the cheese will just have to wait i reckon as we put in the oil and the vinegar <laughs> and um toss. Uh, uh, more tossage more tossage <laughs> tossage and that right. cheese cheese now the cheese lay cheese <laughs> cheese like that and a little more tossing. Mix it up. It's good. Perfect. Well, not perfect. I think I waited a little too long with the cheese. It's very nice to see you again, Mr. Gordon. Mrs. Gordon. Well, that's about it. I hope so. We got a lot to do before dinner, and we got a huge reservation list. Well, I'm not surprised. When they heard about my famous Caesar salad fool show, they came from miles around. Oh, Donald, you were terrific. You really were. Not bad for a future owner. <laughs> I can tell he's acquired your father's charm. What about tonight? Oh, come on. Let's check the reservations and see if we're all set. Honey, that's a pretty huge list. Did you have to turn anyone away? No, we still have lots of blank spaces left. Honey, you don't fill that page. You fill this restaurant. There are more blank spaces on that page than there are seats in the restaurant. Oh, I thought they were equal. <laughs> I see that. Look, you have over 300 reservations here. Oh, Donald, these aren't all for tonight. This is for tonight and tomorrow night. Oh. <laughs> well, how do you tell which one is which? What? How do you tell which ones are for tonight and which ones are for tomorrow night? <laughs> Perhaps we have a problem. <laughs> Oh, yes. Hey, boss. Oh, Frankie, I think we have a little problem. How did you find out so fast? Well, because we were uh, just no, looking No, no, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you talking about, Frankie? The problem in the kitchen. What is it? It's Pierre. He's got the same thing Harry's got. I think you better send for his wife and have her take him home. Are you sure? And if the boss there doesn't cook any better than he makes that Caesar salad, you're out of business for the weekend. <laughs> Oh, Donald, these recipes are so old I can hardly even read them. What am I gonna do? It's so late I couldn't even reach Daddy if I wanted to. Why don't we hire a chef? Oh, sure, hire a chef. You think it's so easy to hire a chef? And besides, how's a strange chef gonna be able to read Daddy's recipes if his own daughter can't? Do you know that in the 20 years that Daddy's had this restaurant, there's only been two chefs he's trusted, Pierre and Andre? Andre, Donald. Andre, I'll bet he'd come for the weekend for me. Why did he leave in the first place? I don't know. I think he retired. Oh, yeah, but I'll bet he'll come back for me for the weekend. Well, that's it, then. The guy must be crazy about you. Call him. Yeah, I wonder what his last name was. I'll ask Frankie. Frankie! Oh, Donald, this is perfect. If he'll come for the weekend, it'll be just great. Yeah, yeah. Frankie, do you know how I get to Andre? Sure, tell him you like his soup. Oh, Frankie, <laughs> please be serious. What was his last name? I don't know. It's probably on your father's desk. Oh, great. Perfect. That's just perfect. Thanks, Andre. Bye. Donald, he's going to come right over and help us out. Did you ask him why he left? 
Well, what does it matter? What matters is he's going to be here in half an hour. Who? Andre. Andre's going to come and help us out for the weekend. You're kidding. Isn't that fantastic? It's my fault. I should have realized why you wanted his number. <laughs> Frankie, what were you getting at in there? Well, maybe he's changed. You know, I shouldn't say nothing about people who are either dead or ain't here. That's a pretty good rule. <laughs> Frankie. Boss, look, wait till he gets here. I could be wrong. Frankie, why did he leave? I don't know which of the reasons he left for. Which? You mean there were a lot of reasons? See? Now, there you go. You got me talking about him again. You said he'll be here soon. Right, right. Morris, are you all right? I think it must be the virus. I'm sorry. So am I. Nobody ever left like that when I was a chef. Andre. Honey, my little aunt. Oh, look at you. You have grown up, my little donker. <laughs> oh, Andre, everything's a disaster. Don't worry. I shall go to the kitchen and prepare dinner immediately. How many reservations we have for tonight? Over 200. Magnifique. I will make 100 duck orange. A la Parisienne. <laughs> Your father's favorite recipe. Andre. Uh, I need a little pick me up uh, before I start cooking. I, I wouldn't mind a pick-me-up, but that's sort of a start you off. You just got here. And you remind me so much of your father. He didn't like your drinking either. Mm. No, but he got used to it. Uh, Andre, can I ask you why you left? Oh, no, nothing serious. Uh, you know, just a slight misunderstanding. <laughs> nothing for you to be concerned about. Andre, shouldn't you start cooking and getting everything ready and everything? Don't worry, my little one. I, I always cook with brandy. <laughs> Donald, I can't tell him. I'll try. No, no Donald, be diplomatic. Don't worry, I will. Andre? What? You're fired. What? You're fired, <laughs> You cannot fire me. You did not hire me. Only Anne can fire me. Anne is firing you. I'm just telling you for her. I was hired for a day's work, and I expect to be paid for a day's work. Yeah, well, you send us a bill. We'll send you a check. Now, come on, go. I have never been so insulted in my whole life. I'm one of the great chefs. All right, I go. But with a heavy heart. And a heavy coat. Hmm? Yours? <laughs> no. Yours. <laughs> Be sure you cut up a lot of lettuce, Donald. There's enough lettuce here to feed half the rabbits in the Western Hemisphere. Well, make enough for the other half. What are you fixing now? Sauce Marie, I think. Here, careful, careful, it's hot. Okay, what do you think? What does it smell like? Like Madison Square Garden. <laughs> Will you look what time it is? All right, honey, now don't get panicky. Well, Donald, I can't understand these darn recipes. They're so complicated. I thought they were going to be so simple. Look, there's all these abbreviations I don't understand. Here, you read what it says, and then I'll get the stuff. What does it say? Uh, eggs. Eggs, okay. How many? Uh, two dozen. Two dozen. Okay. All right. Now... Uh, the separate them. Right, separate them. That's not how you separate eggs, Donald. You separate the white from the yolks. Now, we'll put the whites in here and the yolks in there. Okay, now get started. Just crack the egg on the side of the bowl and then just, just roll it into each other. Right. Okay. Okay, right. Good. Okay, and then into the other bowl. Good. Good. Right there. In right. I have to stop. Why? Uh, to separate the shells from the bowl. Let's 
forget the cheese souffle. We don't need that. We'll just take it off the menu. Uh, well, why not substitute scrambled eggs for it? Scrambled eggs isn't a French dish. This is a French restaurant. Scrambled eggs de Gaulle is not a French dish? <laughs> oh, what else? What are the other recipes? Um... Uh, Scampi Marie. Oh, good. I love that. Everybody loves that. They always order it. We'll make twice as much of that and just forget about the souffle. All right, what do I get? What do I need? Uh, shrimp, for starters. You have any shrimp? Yeah, I got shrimp. Uh, shrimp. Shrimp. Okay. Here I come. All right, now, what do we do with the shrimp? Uh, uh, peel the, uh, uh, the shell off the shrimp. Okay. Uh, I can't do that. Oh, darling, please help me. All right, sweetheart. All right. Despite my better judgment, I think I'm going to give in to Frankie. May I be boss tonight? Yeah, will you? Will you do it? All right. And are these new handwritten menus your idea? Oh, they're delightful and so different. Oh, I'm so glad you like them, Mrs. Sloan. And this chicken is absolutely divine. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that, Mrs. Hendrix. And you will just have to share this one, sorry. Donald, everybody really likes the menus, even though there's only four entrees on it. I just wish we could get the food out faster. Would you like me to talk to the chef? Four more chicken dinners. Four more chicken dinners coming up. The Happy Chicken. <laughs> Four more chicken dinners to the Las Vegas restaurant. Right. Sure to use the back door. Right. Right away. Thank you. Bye. Two more Italian surprises. Two more Italian surprises coming up. Today's <laughs> pizza. Two pizzas with the works. Gotcha. Be sure you use the back door. Right. <laughs> Here you go, Herman. How about my ribs? They'll be ready in a minute. There, okay, now just, just serve those chicken dinners. Make room for the ribs. Oh, great, Frankie. Dish them out for me, will you please? Okay. Great. Another compliment to the chef on the chicken. Yeah, I'll tell him the next time I phone. Pizza's <laughs> 350. Oh, don't pay him for me, will you please? This eating out is getting expensive. Okay, tell Herman his Italian surprises are ready. Maybe we should put Chinese food on the menu. You know, the Golden Dragon's right down the street. Good night, boss. Good night, Ann. Night. night Don't forget friend. to lock up. No, I won't. Donald, will you look at these figures? After paying for all that food, we still came out all right. That's amazing. You may not be the best chef in the world, but you're great at business management. Oh, Donald, thanks to you. Now, may I ask you one question? Yes, you may. What are we going to do about tomorrow night? Well, it would be pressing our luck to try the same thing again. Definitely. That's what I thought. That's why I've made special arrangements. What kind of arrangements? I'm decorating the whole place with a Hungarian motif. I'm going to make my special famous goulash, and it's going to be Hungarian night at La Parisienne. <laughs> Fine. Excuse me. I have to make my arrangements. What arrangements? Decorations for Brewster General Hospital. It's going to be a Hungarian night there, too. <laughs>